Hello, hello, DRock here. Welcome to the channel. I hope you all are well. So I thought I'd do a video. I've recently got a few comments in regards to the KLR650. Uh, people were wondering if it would be a good bike for them to learn with, to begin with. Is the KLR650 a good beginner bike? Well, let's talk about it and we'll find out. So join me. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps us out tremendously. So if you're considering the KLR650 as your first bike, a beginner bike, uh, there's a few things you should know. And I'm gonna point out those. So uh, number one, of course, is the size of the bike. It's a big bike, man. This is my 2022 model KLR650. I am pretty stoked with this bike. And it is not a small bike. It's a beast, to be honest with you. Now size can certainly be intimidating. I know I was when I was looking at my first motorcycle. I would, you know, stood next to them, sit on them. And I remember the first time I actually got on a KLR650. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about this, man. This bike is huge. Because uh, I was coming from a, a much smaller bike. And uh, yeah, it was very intimidating the first time I actually sat on a KLR. So let me just go ahead and talk about the main specs. Uh, seat height is 34.3 inches. My inseam is 32 inches. I stand about five foot 10. Um, power of this bike's 40 horsepower, 39 foot pounds of torque, engine 652 cc's, liquid cooled, and the curb weight is 456 pounds pounds if you're not familiar with what curb weight means that's pretty much the bike with all the fluids and everything combined as a curb weight now that doesn't include your gear everything you put on the bike so you know you need to take that into factor as well so if you take a look at mine if you take all the stuff off the bike 20 22 models roughly 400 and 50 pounds or so, give or take a few pounds. Now you add on all the armor, baggage, you're probably looking at around 500 pounds. Everything, all your gear, and then if you throw all your camping gear and stuff like that on it, yeah, you're looking at a, it's a heavy bike, no doubt. So like I said, seat height's 34.3 inches. I'm about 5'10", inseam 32. I'm gonna stand next to the bike just to give you an idea of how tall this bike is. There we go. There's my waist. It comes up to my waist. It's tall. Let me go around the other side. That can be quite intimidating for a beginner bike. Let's just get on this. So here I am, and I cannot stand flat footed on this bike. I will say something, the 2022 model versus the 20, the model I had previously, 2012, I swear this one's lower. The previous generation felt like it was a little taller to me, but uh, I don't know. I feel like on the newer model here, the 2022, I've got, I really felt like I was really on my tiptoes on Gen 2. On the Gen 3, I feel like I'm not exactly flat footed, but uh, well, you see. I can't, I can do flat footed enough on a lean, but um, that's something that can be a little intimidating. On a side note, the 2023 model now has a short model. So you've got the KLR650, normal, seat height of 34.3 inches. The new KLRS model or short model, uh, from what I've read, the seat height is only 32 inches. That's that's over two inches lower. I mean, that's a big difference. So I haven't seen one of these yet, but that's pretty cool. So let's talk about another thing. Let's talk about the weight of the bike. That's a big deal too. So as I mentioned, 456 pounds curb weight. This bike holds almost six gallons of gas. Some say 6.1, some say 5.7. I don't know who's right. All I'm saying is that's a lot of gas. The range on this bike is said to get 300 miles. Now, of course, that depends on how you're riding and what you're riding in. Are you riding 70 miles an hour into a headwind or are you cruising the back streets at 35 miles an hour? I don't know. Anyway, it's a lot of gas. Gas, like water, is heavy. Here's a five gallon gas tank. 
full of gas. This weighs what? 35, maybe 37 pounds. So you got all that gas up high, right there. All that weight, full tank. What does that mean? It means the bike's gonna be top heavy. And I lay this bike down all the time when I ride. And I lay it down most of the time when I'm coming to a stop and turning and the weight gets me because it's so top heavy. And I don't try and fight it, I just I let it go. But that's also another thing to consider. So talking about the weight, top heaviness of the bike, this is gonna lead into another important factor in riding this motorcycle, especially as a beginner. That's right, you're gonna lay the damn thing down. Oh snap. I'm 40 miles deep in the desert by myself. I just laid this thing down in a ditch. What am I ever gonna do? Yup, piece of cake, right? Made it look easy because it was easy. If you learn how to pick up the bike, it's really not that big of a deal. Now, that's right here in the grass. The scenario, the scenario I just mentioned, in the desert, in a ditch, it's a whole different story. And it can be extremely difficult to deal with the weight of this bike. So at least learning the basics of how to pick that bike up will give you confidence to ride this bike. And building confidence is well, it's one of the most important things of riding a motorcycle. Okay, I wanted to illustrate the difference in size here. So this right here is my Yamaha XT250. This is my first motorcycle. This is the motorcycle I learned to ride on. I still have it because it's a fantastic motorcycle. I have it here to illustrate the size difference of the KLR versus something smaller. So uh, you can tell there is a dramatic difference in size between these two bikes worth repeating so I will again the curb weight of this bike is 456 pounds that's not with the gear on it that's just the bike the weight of this bike 290 pounds seat height 34 inches look at that 31.9 inches big difference absolutely so if you're just learning how to ride what do you think is going to be better to build your confidence and experience on? This bike or this bike? Ultimately, that's up to you. Some would say the smaller bike. Some would say the larger bike. You know, get on it. Get on that big bike. You're going to learn. Blah, blah, blah. True. That may be very true. However, at the same token, you might get on it, lay it down, can't pick the thing up and it's gonna scare you. And you're not going to feel comfortable riding it, therefore you're not going to take it uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is you're not gonna challenge yourself on it because that's ultimately how you're gonna get better at riding these things. So take a look, because here's an excellent example of the size difference of the KLR 650 versus something smaller. Noticeable, huh? Yeah, extremely so. But learning on the smaller bike definitely helped me grow and it gave me confidence to where I wanted to continue to learn, I wanted to continue to ride, and I wanted to move up in size. So I think it was, for me, a good way to start on the smaller bike. It may not be for everyone, but for me, it worked out perfectly. Okay, so I've talked about you know the size, the weight of the bike. Now let's talk about the power of the bike. And to do that, let's go for a ride. So let me suit up and I'll be right back. All right, so now let's move on and talk about the speed and power of the KLR 650. So you need to ask yourself, do you want a fast bike? If you're a beginner, when you hit the throttle, do you want that bike to stand up? As a beginner, or shall I say, when I was a beginner and I hit the throttle, I did not want the bike to take off. Nope. And that's one thing the KLR isn't going to do. It isn't by any means a fast bike. It's got enough horsepower 
to travel the interstate 70 75 miles an hour it'll do that just fine it can hang in there are there bikes that can go faster absolutely so the klr will comfortably cruise 55 60 miles an hour that is not a problem whatsoever and like i mentioned 75 miles an hour down the interstate not a problem also uh, she's only got five gears so you don't really have that sixth cruising gear but um, it works out just fine I, it hasn't annoyed me or bothered me I remember the first time I rode uh, the KLR 650 moving up from the XT250 the first thing I noticed immediately was when I was at a stop and I needed to turn how much wider the bike was like it wasn't as nimble as that 250 and I was like turning wide and everything it was uh it was kind of interesting but I've since gotten over that but if you're not moving from a smaller bike to the KLR you're not going to really notice it but if you are that'll be something to notice one thing I'll point out is that once you get moving on the bike even though you know you got a lot of weight up top with the gas um it's actually quite stable once you get going she just stays up and I don't really notice that top heaviness at all so as a beginner um, just from my experience it's it, the first time I got on the KLR and took off down the road I was a little worried about that and I, I really didn't notice it at all I notice it the most when I come to a stop and I've got to get on my feet and that's when I really feel the top heaviness of the bike not so much when I'm riding so I was curious as I moved into the KLR from the 250 uh, how the bike would perform on the dirt. I was a little nervous about it, you know, considering the size of the bike, the weight of the bike, how top heavy it was. And uh, to be honest, the, the KLR handles just fine on the dirt. Um, once again, I don't really notice it being too top heavy as I'm riding, once I get going. Um, the bike performs well in, in deep sand, loose gravel. I mean, the bike can handle some, some pretty rough stuff. So as a beginner, uh, that may be important to you because you are going to grow into the bike and you may start off riding easy on dirt roads, but at some point you're going to want to look for something more and the KLR can certainly uh, handle a lot of what you can throw at it. So as far as getting this bike out on the dirt, you know, as, as long as you're aware of uh, can you pick the bike up, you know, things of that nature, then I mean, I don't honestly think you'll have a problem handling the bike. As I mentioned, I'm five foot 10 inches tall and I find the KLR very comfortable to stand on, uh, very comfortable to stand on for long periods of time. One thing I will mention is you're probably gonna to wanna to get the stock pegs off and move into a little bit of a wider platform uh, for standing. But uh, other than that, great bike, stand and ride on. So right now I'm on a pretty hard packed dirt road. Uh, there's some loose gravel on the top and I feel like the bike's extremely stable. It'll be interesting because uh, Jen's intending to do a video on the KLR from her perspective. So uh, being female, smaller, see how she deals with the bike on the asphalt and the dirt, see what her take is. But to me, uh, I feel the bike's perfectly stable and that's something to take into consideration as a beginner rider. Uh, you want to look at those things to boost your confidence and being comfortable on the bike you're riding is certainly one of those. So this is, this is one of the biggest things that I noticed with the KLR as I moved into it from the smaller bike and that's turning this bike around. It seemed like it took me a little getting used to because it's so much, it needs so much more room to do it than uh, when I was riding the 250 and as a beginner I just had to get used to that but that was actually the the main thing that kind of threw me off after moving into this bike but 
as I said, if you're not moving from a smaller bike into this bike, I guess you won't really notice because you don't have anything to compare that to. And that's usually where I lay the bike down most of the time, is while I'm trying to turn this thing around somewhere. Especially in the dirt or soft sand or something. That's when I really notice the top heaviness of the bike, and that's when I'll drop it, for the most part. <laughs> so the bike's pretty simple as far as the instruments, the panel, what's on the handlebars. My model is just a base model. There's no ABS, there's nothing. There are no bells and whistles on this bike. I mean, you basically just get on it, turn the key to on, and start it and go. That's it, it's that simple. You got some headlight functions here, kill switch over here, horn over there, that's it. No mess of electronic work to deal with, no settings to constantly have to dabble with. It's just turnkey, baby. You turn it, start it, go. So that's really good. I like that. I like that as a beginner, as a beginner bike, it's really simple to revisit this topic about the power of the bike. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, you hit the throttle on this bike, it's not gonna stand up and just buck you off or anything. As a beginner, you're gonna, you're learning controls, you're learning how to deal with the throttle, how to get up and go and things like that. And so, you know, you're out here, you hit the throttle. <laughs> it's, it's, this thing's not gonna stand up and kick you off. So very stable in the dirt, in my opinion, you know, depending on what you're riding on, the type of tire that is, and uh, as equally as stable on the asphalt. So confidence inspiring. So let's talk about the price of the KLR650. So my model here, 2022 model, base model, no ABS, no nothing. Oh, uh, if I recall correctly, I got this out the door for tax tax title, just under eight grand or right at $8,000, something like that. Maybe cheaper, I don't remember the exact amount. Um, maybe it was less than that. But it's a great price. And of course, there's, there were different models. Um, the 2023 models, I don't know if they're doing the the uh, adventure model, the traveler model, and other thing like they did in 2022. Maybe they are, but um, it's in a very affordable bike. And for the money, I think you get a lot of bike. Lots of people have said the same thing. So it's kind of beating a dead horse with this. But another aspect of the KLR 650 is that if you didn't want to buy new, like I didn't, there are a million options on the used market for a KLR. If you go to any Cycle Trader or Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, anything like this, and you punch in KLR 650, you can find excellent condition bikes you know all modded out all geared out everything already done armored up panniers all that stuff for you know, four grand or so and also to mention there's a giant community around the klr so lots of lots of people to ask questions to and uh, a lot of input a lot of resources right there so it's a great bike to get into. If you're starting used or new, the price points are great. You've got a giant community already around the bike. You just can't beat that really. So one of the first things I did when I got the KLR, or my first KLR was I just got into empty parking lots and uh, started practicing turning on this thing. I was so just like blown away by how much more difficult it was it seemed at the time anyway to turn this thing as compared to the uh, XT250 but uh, once you get it it's really not that big of a deal so I just come in and you know do turns figure eights I'd lay the bike down <laughs> but it will work out 
one other cool thing about the KLR 650 is uh, lots of aftermarket support for the bike. Now the new model, everything's starting to catch up with it, and uh, you've just got, God, especially with the older model, the, the Gen 2, you've just got tons of things to pull from. So you want to armor up your bike, add accessories, luggage, all that. Lots of stuff to choose from, lots of companies to choose from. Pretty cool to build your bike out. Yep. KLR is a fun bike to ride, no doubt about that. So is the KLR 650 a good beginner bike? I think so. I honestly think so. I moved into it after only riding for uh, a year on the XC250 and I didn't have any problems uh, aside from dealing with the wide turning. Other than that, I fell right into the bike um, and here we are today. So there's a couple things I think you need to take in consideration given the size and weight of the bike. Other than that, I think this is a great bike to begin on and learn and continue on and to keep riding. It's just a great all around bike, I think so. And um, I think the points that I've come over on the video should illustrate that. So that being said, I also think that it helped for me moving from the smaller motorcycle into this size. So you know, the XC250 moving up into the KLR 650 gave me that little boost in confidence because you know, when you first walk up to a KLR, it's without having any prior experience, it's just a big bike, you know, it's a little overwhelming. Well, to me it was, but that may not be you. <laughs> but anyway, those things aside, yeah, I do think it's a good beginner bike. And uh, as you progress and get more confidence and get more skill in riding, the bike can handle a lot of things you, you want to do with it. So I'd like to hear your experiences with the KLR. Did you learn on the bike? Is it your first bike? Did you move into the bike from another bike? You know, maybe you don't think it's a great beginner bike. I'd like to hear these things, so leave a comment illustrating that. So ultimately, I do think the KLR is a good beginner bike for a few reasons. Uh, the price point, the ease of use, uh, the aftermarket support, and the very large community that surrounds the bike. And there you have it. <laughs> Folks, we got lots more content on the way. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps us out tremendously. We will see you next time. D-Rock out. Adios.